Alright, so uh, do you want to give us a little bit of background information about yourself? Myself? Yes. Okay, um, well my name is Katrin Meisner. Um, I was born in Germany, I went to school in Germany, I then did my undergrad in France, that's why I have a weird accent, it's half German, half French. Um, I did my undergrad in engineering actually, and really wanted to work with the ocean, so the easiest way to do this is to work for an oil company, so <laughs> I did that <laughs> for a short time. I realized that's really not what I wanted to do. Went back to university, did a PhD, no, first a master's in Senegal and a PhD in Germany in physics. And then I worked in Canada for 10 years, had an appointment as a professor there, and had a midlife crisis and returned to Australia four years ago. Yeah. Oh, very good. <laughs> thank you. I think you answered my second question. Oh. Um, that's, that's fine. We, we got both of them out of the road. Uh, so now we'll go, what are the best and worst aspects of your job at the moment? Um, or Without doubt, the best aspects are students. Yeah. Students and um, other colleagues overseas when I can visit other institutes, see what they're doing, and here working with students. Because they're young, they're enthusiastic, they're international. I, I, I love that aspect. Um, the worst, uh, some of my colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I think the worst is probably sometimes the whole that the whole system is very slow if you want to change things in universities or in big institutions. It takes a long time. Um, lots of administration we do too, um, which can be interesting too, but quite often it's just filling out forms, writing lots of letters, and that can be a little bit boring. But most of the time in the morning I get in the my in, into the university and I like it. Okay, oh, so that's the students. It's you guys. Yeah. yeah so um, Okay, let's go back to what actually do you do as your profession? Okay, so um, I have an appointment here as an associate professor. Um, it's a permanent position, and that means that theoretically I should do, I think, 40%, 30 or 40% teaching, 30, 40% research, and the rest administration. Um, I am, though, on a fellowship. So right now, the ARC, the Australian Research Council, pays for my salary. Basically, they bought me from the university so that I can only do research. This lasts for four years. Uh, but I mean, you work for universities, so that means that you can't completely say I'm going to close my door and only do research. But I still do quite a bit of administration, but I don't teach right now. Like I maybe give two or three lectures a year, uh, which is, uh, it's sad because I like teaching, but it's really good because I have much more time for my grad students and for my own research. Nice. So my job is right now mostly research, although having said that, um, I rarely get time to do my own research. It's mostly my grad students' research, my, my research group's research and sitting on lots of comedies, reading lots of reports of things what other people do. I spend lots of time doing that, trying to apply for money, yeah. All right, so in your research career, uh, what is like the most important discovery that you've made? <laughs> this is, <a laughs> they always ask you this. Um, that's a good question, because in a way, I'm tempted to say there's so many and then there's none. Um, research, really to advance research, you need lots of people and you need lots of different aspects. So all I've done is like, putting little pieces to advance the science. Um, but in my, I think some of my, and I, I've done lots of different things too, uh, too I'm, I'm quite multidisciplinary, but I, if we want to zoom in on just one um, that I found interesting, is if we look at, at proxy data from the past, we see that climate was very variable, much more variable than it is today. And sometimes even within 10, 15 years, we had temperature jumps of seven degrees, like it's huge. And during these temperature jumps, we had lots of CO2 that came into the atmosphere. And I worked probably about 10 years of my life trying to understand where this carbon came from. And if that can happen right now, it would be pretty bad if all of a sudden we go over threshold and then we have some fast release carbon that just pops up. So that's one part of my research that I, I think is important. And um, we still haven't really solved it, actually. Um, we're pretty sure it's the ocean, but <laughs> where did it come out of the ocean? We don't know. Um, other things I've done, I've worked a little bit on vegetation feedbacks, trying to understand um, why we get ice ages. Um, I've worked on impacts, trying to understand when which coral reef is going to die in the future. <laughs> yeah, that's very, that was a very depressive study. Um, yeah, and I've done lots of future runs, like how long will it take um, for the carbon to actually get out of the atmosphere again? And yeah, long term impacts. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so is that, I'm guessing that's where you want to see yourself 20 years in the, f in the future or 10 years in the future? 20 years in the future, I would like to be retired. <laughs> 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 10 yeah. years in the future, yeah, I think if I'm lucky enough to continue the way what I'm doing now, I love it. 
I, I have a pretty cozy job. Um, as long as there's not more pressure to do much more of each, right now it's really good. I have a small group, but it's good, so I can spend lots of time with every student and everybody in my group. Um, I have lots of support. Yeah, no, I would like to just continue. Maybe, um, I mean, of course, it comes with getting a little bit older. I will probably become more involved in bigger um, research, how do you call this, um, organizations or umbrella organizations. Like I do this already quite a bit, so that you're trying to see more. Instead of just doing your own research, seeing where should the whole country, what are the research pr priorities of a country, which big collaborations are there, where can we get the big money from, and so that I will probably do more and more of that. That's fun too, but I really like the small scale. Yes, yeah, working with students. Yeah. Okay. What? Okay. What are your current environmental concerns, if you have any at all? Obviously, you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know where to start. Um, uh, of course, I have huge concerns. Huge, huge concerns. Um, climate change is there. It's not stoppable. Like even if we cut off every, if right now we turn everything off, everything. We are committed to the double of the one we already had, just because the climate system is so slow. So it's there. The uh, question is how bad will it be, and that of course depends on our actions today. Um, from my understanding, it's going to be very, very bad, and people don't realize it, and it's going to be irreversible. So it's not that at one point we say, okay, we really don't like this, or, or, or I don't know, food chains are falling apart. We won't be able to change it quickly back, because there's lots of inertia in the system. It's really slow to turn it back. So the consequences I'm personally the most concerned about is um, water will be a problem in the future. Um, it'll be and, and with water, of course, crops and food. Um, food in the ocean will be a problem because of acidification and fisheries. Um, so people will have a hard time to eat and drink, which then will, I think, lead to social unrest and, and lots of other problems. And there's, of course, countries that might disappear with rising sea level, it's, that's a concern. Um, we will have more storms. All the extremes will become more extreme. So I think it's time to adapt a lot. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, so you, I'm guessing in 100 years you don't believe the world will look anything like what? Oh, the world will still be there. Yeah. And there will still be life. I mean, life on the planet has adapted to big change. No, maybe not quite as fast, but big change. Like when we got hit by meteorites, like things really. There will be life. Um, it will be very different from what we know today, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. How it will be, I. it's hard to tell you because. We don't have much data of these things. These things have happened in the past. There was one event, for example, 55 million years ago, where we had a huge spike in CO2, much slower, over 100, over several thousand years, not not 100 years. And it's one of the mass extinction events. Like, I mean, we're going into an extinction, but telling you how it will look like, I don't know. It's pretty scary. <laughs> yeah. The humans will probably be the most resilient ones, actually. Humans will probably be <laughs> around, <laughs> but maybe not as well and healthy as we are today. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So you've been doing this for? Uh, that's a good question. Over 20 part, years. Yeah. Over 20, 20 years, years. Yeah. I had that written down. Yeah. So. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> um, yeah, so over your 20 year career, what like what are the biggest changes you've witnessed? In my everyday life? Yeah. Climate changes uh, in my everyday life, I don't really see. And I don't think anybody really does. Um, you see it in the data. You see it over the long term averages. Um, what I have seen is m more of, and, and actually the, I think that's the hope, there's way more people aware of it. Uh, too slow, but people are talking about it. It's now taught in schools, it's now, in, and, and, and I mean some people still, of course there's a big lobby and big machines with lots of money trying to get the other opinion out. But I think people slowly catch up knowing that this is a problem. And I think that's where our hope is. I mean, humans are intelligent, I hope, a little bit. And um, if, if we switch quickly, I don't think it's that hard even, we don't even have to change our lifestyle much, but if we really switch quickly to a more sustainable way of living, maybe in 100 years uh, the world won't be that different. It will be definitely different, I mean, there won't be any ice in the summer in the Arctic, for example, that I can guarantee you. Uh, there, there will be changes, but it might still be a livable planet if we move. Well, that brings me to my yeah. next question, where oh. is the, in the budget recently announced, the, the government's going to ax the Australian Renewable Energy Agency. Yeah, they axed a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but granted that does pass through the Senate, do you believe like that, that raises another question about our political... For sure, yeah. but people voted for them. Exactly. 
well, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, I, I actually really, yeah, I think it's a question of education. People need to know more about it. The media has to be less biased towards the big oil companies that ha have the money. If we get real information out, I mean, people are not dumb, then the governments will follow. But I don't think the governments will take the lead. Well, with this huge money input from these big oil companies, that's probably one of the major yeah. disadvantages to our society. That yeah, of course. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, they're, of course, involved in politics. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you believe that population growth is linked with climate change? Uh, yeah, yes and no. Yes, of course. Um, every human being will have an impact, of course. Um, but it really depends on how these people live and what choices they do, right? Um, I mean, uh, I don't know the right numbers, but 10 people in a developing country probably burn as much carbon as one single baby in the United States. So um, it really it is linked, but it doesn't mean it's the main cause. Yeah, it's climate change. Uh, it's happening very, very fast, but in a way it's happening in the background. You don't get up in the morning and something hurts because of climate change, right? But you might wake up in the morning and your house burned down by a fire that might have been there naturally, but probably was there because of climate change, because you had a higher chance to have a fire. Mm -hmm. So it will be hard to keep it, although it's, I think, the biggest threat to humanity right now, I think it's very hard to keep it in the media as, as a spectacular line every every day. And and that feeds back into the next problem is that we as scientists are, are really careful to make bold statements like uh, because we double check everything and it has to be completely right. So if there's a huge bushfire that burns all the houses in, I don't know, the Blue Mountains, we'll say there's an 80% chance that this bushfire wouldn't have existed without climate change, but even without climate change, there would have been a 20% chance that this bushfire... <laughs> and I mean, these yeah. messages, of course, we because we cannot say 100%, nothing is ever 100%, and that that's why it gets watered down in the media. And that's why I think it's not in everybody's head all the time. But I, I quite often think at the whole smoking analog, have you heard about this one? People used to smoke a lot, right? And... and um, there were even big, because there was lots of money in the smoking industry, do like big um, commercials with good looking guys smoking, saying, I'm a doctor and I smoke. <laughs> <laughs> saying it has absolutely no negative health effect. So it was long debated. And I would say, no, you ask every kid in the street, even if they smoke, right? I, I think everybody knows, okay, it's probably not the best you can do for your lungs or for your health. And it just, there's some inertia until people accept that. And I think with climate change, because there's, so much involved for so many people, it will just take a while, but we'll get there. But I don't think you can keep it at the first lines in the journals just because of its nature. But it will be there more and more because you will have more floods, you will have more um, storms, you will have more droughts, you will have more fires. And every time this happens, there will be a connection to climate change. All right, well, will you wrap this? What do, you, what, do, what do I say to wrap it up? What do, you, what, what do you normally get? Usually, well, thank you so much for your oh. time. <laughs> That, that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> um, all right. So yeah. Sensible face. Uh, thank you for your time. That was very interesting. Uh, You're welcome. Thank you. Good. good luck, all of you.